in this presentation, we will explore swordfish storage pools and classes of service. This presentation builds on the concepts described in the previous presentation entitled Volume Creation Basics in Redfish and Swordfish. This presentation is covered by the SNEA legal notice shown here. Redfish can model groups of computer systems that incorporate many storage devices, services, and interconnects. The first step in deciding which storage solution an application should use is to categorize and group interchangeable solutions together. This is the purpose of Swordfish classes of service and storage pools. Administrators create classes of service to describe what they think applications will need. Storage resources are grouped into storage pools that are capable of supporting specific classes of service. These storage pools are tagged with the classes of service that describe their capabilities. This enables systematic management of storage pools comprising various capabilities and technologies from which volumes can be created. This is how class of service and storage pool resources are used by the Swordfish Storage Service to manage block, file, or object storage and make it available to one or more clients. In addition, storage groups can be used to designate accessibility via local and remote access points, as well as common behaviors across groups of resources. Redfish management indicates support for storage schemas by the presence of one or more storage service resources that serve as anchor points for all other Swordfish resources. A class of service describes a service to be provided by a storage resource. Each class of service can comprise multiple lines of service, each describing service level objective aspects. Currently, Swordfish defines the following lines of service. The data protection line of service describes the creation and maintenance of data replicas for the purpose of recovery from data loss. The data security line of service describes security measures such as encryption, user host authentication, antivirus, and sanitization methods. The data storage line of service describes high availability data access, such as read only, read write, or write once, and thin provisioning requirements. The IO performance line of service describes characteristics of a multi-part storage workload, including randomness, IO size, intensity, such as IOPS or data rate, as well as expected access density and latency. The IO connectivity line of service describes characteristics of a storage service, including protocol and maximum IOs per second. Each storage service advertises the classes of service that the implementation can support. Storage pools advertise classes of service for storage that can be created from the pool. Volumes and file systems advertise classes of service that specify the level of service that they are expected to provide. Classes of service may be incomplete in that some line of service attributes may not be specified. Implementations may allocate storage from any storage pool that supports the requirements in the class of service called out by the volume, if any. Several approaches can be used to match classes of service. The simplest way to use Swordfish is to establish a default class of service for unsophisticated storage consumers. This allows any storage pool that supports the default to be automatically selected during the creation of volumes, file systems, or object stores without explicit reference to any class of service. The storage service uses the default class of service if none is specified when a volume is created by posting it to the volume collection in the storage service. A default class of service may also be assigned to a storage pool for use when a volume is created by posting it to the allocated volumes collection in a storage pool or to the volumes collection in a storage or storage group resource. A second way to use classes of service is to link a volume to a specific pre-existing class of service from a set supported by the storage service before posting it to the volume collection in the storage service. During volume creation, Swordfish will then select a storage pool that references that class of service. 
A third way to use classes of service is to link a unique class of service resource to the volume that indicates only the subset of characteristics of interest to the volume creator. In this use case, there is no storage pool that references the unique class of service. Sortfish implementations that include this capability will choose a storage pool that supports a class of service matching the subset, regardless of any characteristics that were not called out by the volume creator. Sophisticated storage service implementations may incorporate various ways of matching classes of service between consumers and providers of storage, such as a volume using a storage pool. Generally, these fall into two categories. For a manual or scripted search, the properties of a desired class of service can be used to search for a sufficient match in a collection of available classes of service. The meaning of sufficient is defined by the user's requirements expressed in the search. This may be as simple as only specifying a class of service name defined in the customer environment. Or an administrator can find an attribute of interest and search for classes of service that match just that attribute. Swordfish comes with a convenient way of searching class of service collections for matching attribute values. For example, to create a volume that can provide at least 1,000 IOs per second per terabyte, one can search the classes of service collection in a storage service using the expression shown here. Once a class of service is chosen, an available storage pool is selected that advertises that class of service. For automated selection, Swordfish implementations may be able to determine algorithmically whether a desired class of service can be met by an existing storage pool. This is triggered when a volume references a partially populated class of service as it is posted to a volume collection in a storage service. While Swordfish provides a standard means of expressing classes of service in a context that allows automatic storage selection, it does not specify or constrain the sophistication thereof. It is expected that various vendors will create a wide range of implementations as a source of differentiation. A storage pool represents a factory that can produce one or more volume file system or storage pool resources. Sources of storage capacity for a storage pool are represented by entries in its capacity sources array. The capacity is used to create the produced storage resources. Capacity sources arrays also appear in volumes and file systems. The sources of capacity are not required to be of the same type as or co-located with the resources that the storage pool creates. Storage pools are not in the data path to storage controllers or devices. The algorithms for consolidating different sources of capacity into a single volume or file system in real time are the responsibility of controllers or other data path implementations, not the storage pool itself. Three types of source capacity are currently defined. Providing drives is a collection of source drive resources. This capacity source is used when disk drives are dedicated to individual storage pools. The included drives may be populated manually or by an implementation specific means of matching drive properties to line of service properties. For example, SSDs and HDDs may be mapped to different performance lines of service. Providing volumes is a collection of source volume resources. For example, volumes provided by Redfish storage resources can be a source of storage pool capacity. The class of service of a providing volume does not necessarily map directly to the class of service of the storage pool. The only requirement is that the storage pool implementation is able to use that storage to produce new storage resources having one of the advertised classes of service of the pool. Providing pools is a collection of source storage pool resources. This allows hierarchical structure to be imposed within and across storage pools. In general, classes of service should be uniform across providing pools. However, as with providing volumes, the classes of service of the providing storage pool are not necessarily the same as the class of service of the storage pool consuming them. 
as swordfish continues to evolve, memory may be supported as an additional source of capacity. This range of class of service and storage pool uses and characteristics shows the flexibility of swordfish implementations. For example, a very simple storage service might have only a default class of service that describes the characteristics of an SSD. Such a storage service might have a single storage pool that associates the default class of service with the SSDs that are discovered within a given computer system. In this configuration, volumes with no class of service automatically get SSDs. In the same data center, a sophisticated storage service implementation might, su might support both the above SSD class of service as a default, along with several additional classes of service describing disk array-based storage solutions that include RAID and an optional remote copy feature. One storage pool could obtain providing volumes from the disk arrays, which are modeled as computer systems in Redfish. Another could create data protection relationships, such as remote copy, among volumes on a pair of arrays. Volumes created with a class of service that calls for high availability but is silent about remote copy data protection would be provisioned without the remote copy service. Other volumes that specifically include remote copy characteristics in their classes of service would be provisioned with both RAID and remote copy. Now you know the high-level mechanics of storage pools and classes of service in Swordfish. For more information and resources, please see the link provided here.